Greetings, and welcome to this in-depth exploration of the Pactum of Blessed Francis Jordan, the visionary founder of the Salvatorians. Today, we delve into the insightful commentary of three distinguished Salvatorians, Father Peter Van Mile, Mr. Christian Putzel, and Sister Carol Thresher. Father Jordan gave his heart document an unusual name, namely the Latin word pactum, which means in English treaty, covenant or contract. The Good Father was of course inspired by the biblical books of the Old Testament, by Noah, Abraham and Moses and the prophets who all had a covenant with their God. The term pactum is only used in the spiritual diary and in none of other Jordanian writings like his letters, talks, constitutions. By studying the pactum of Father Jordan in his spiritual diary, I was particularly impressed by its date, November 1, 1891, All Saints' Day. Ten years of hard working, of laying the fundaments of his, of his apostolic teaching society in the year 1881. Men and women dedicated themselves completely and wholehearted to this new apostolic and missionary work, go to the end of this globe, to the periphery, and teach, talk, tell the good story, learn, explain, discuss, and write. I would like to mention now here still and another important pastoral and spiritual event in that year. I quote from the book, page 18 until 19. On September 20, 1891, three months before the Pactum, Brother Felix Bucher was ordained a priest in Rome. He traveled a year later to the United States, where he worked beneficently as one of the first pioneers of the American province. Four years earlier, Father Jordan had carried out an exorcism on that brother. Father Jordan and his young and praying community had experienced the strength of the Almighty God over the power of Satan and over the poor brother Felix. The satanic manifestation against the society in the first time of January, February 1887 had convinced the diocesan priest and theologian Lawrence Hopfemuller, later Father Otto, to enter the new institute as he declared in his brochure on the society. After his healing, Brother Felix began the studies of philosophy and theology and was ordained a priest, as I said, on September 20, 1891. Now, I ask myself, was not his day of ordination for Father Jordan, a visible sign of God the Almighty, who is stronger than the power of evil? Did Father Jordan feel himself to be an instrument of the Almighty God, while he, with the official permission of the vicariate in Rome, was healing the poor brother through the rite of exorcism, healing the wounded ones? Was Father Jordan not obligated to make a pact with God the Almighty, to protect himself against the power of Satan 
and to ask the Lord for help for his future apostolic activities. Because of experience with Satan, Father Jordan, in his pactum, called God Creator Omnipotence, God Almighty, designating God as a partner and helper against Satan. Father Jordan not only knew the proverb of Cicero, pacts have to be kept, but he renewed his pactum regularly. He also tied each renewal of his apostolic zeal or an aspect of his spiritual life to a special religious event. I give you an example. Father Jordan made July 25, 1888, some resolutions in memory of the 10th anniversary of his first Holy Mass to spend more time in prayer. How the pactum function in Father Jordan's life becomes apparent by his renewal over a period of 25 years. Five exact dates with day, month and year are listed on page 202 of the spiritual diary. Father Jordan was primarily motivated by pastoral and spiritual concerns, faithful to his vision and undertakings as a founder, faithful to his friendship with the Almighty God in the Pactum. A look at each of the dates will clarify the context of the renewal, which is absolutely energizing. Dear Salvatorians all over the world, it is really worthwhile to jump into this unique text, which I friendly called the story of a never-ending song of trust. As we delve deeper into the significance of the pact, let's explore its impact on the life and mission of Blessed Father Jordan from Sister Carol Thresher. I have been blessed to be involved in ongoing formation work all around the Salvatorian world. The focus of that ministry has been our Salvatorian charism. In that process, I have discovered many things, but especially the immense richness of what we have come to call Blessed Father Jordan's Pact with God. This precious document can be found in the Founder's first book of his spiritual diary, page 202 to 203. I want to take this opportunity to encourage you to take time to locate this hidden treasure and begin to journey with the richness that it can evoke in your own Salvatorian life and your vocation. If you're not a Salvatorian, I would encourage you to discover how Blessed Jordan's pact and how his words touch into and enrich your own covenantal relationship with the God of your life. You may wish to take time to learn more about the pact by reading volume 13 of our contributions on Salvatorian history, charism, and spirituality. That volume is entitled Blessed Francis Jordan's Pact with God. You'll find this in electronic format on the USA Salvatorian Family website under resources. Now in this book, you'll find articles on the pact by Father Peter Van Mile and myself, as well as other international Salvatorians. Now returning to the pact itself, we see clearly from its beginning that the document is written as a contract between God and Blessed Jordan. You know, it's fundamentally relational and in it, 
we hear echoes of the covenant bond between God and the people of Israel. Its words actually speak of a partnership between the Almighty Creator and this lowliest creature. Certainly, this is an unequal partnership, and the words chosen by Blessed Jordan really do emphasize that reality, while at the same time show how he relies on the bounty of the Creator's gifts. God has given everything that the creature then lifts back in apostolic generosity. Thus it becomes, and Jordan becomes, a partner in a cycle of total giftedness. Clearly, God is the source of all gifts, and the call of the pact is for Jordan to live a life that draws all of creation into deeper relationship with the God of life. I believe there is a cosmic sense that penetrates this movement between the divine and the human. This is at the heart of Blessed Jordan's experience of God. This almost overwhelming God experience, which the pact expresses, was foundational for Blessed Jordan. It kept him centered in the deep intimacy of his own personal call to holiness, as well as in the goal and mission of his foundation. He came to know intimately this cosmic God who desires fullness of life for all creation and wants its vibrancy to penetrate every corner of the universe every periphery of society, in some all of creation. The 25 plus times Jordan renews this pact show us how important it was to him. It gave him a sense of direction and courage in times of doubt and intense questioning on the part of others. It kept him at, on the right path and became for him an orienting compass so as I close, let me assure you that I trust that the pact of Blessed Jordan can become more alive for all of us. It will help us live more deeply into our own personal call to relationship with the God of our life. Yes, we also are called into covenant with the one who gifts us with all we need to live our lives and to make a difference in today's world. This is what Blessed Jordan hoped for all the women and men from all walks of life who sense a call to be apostles, to be the goodness and kindness of Jesus in the world today. And finally, let's hear Christian Putzel share his personal connection with God. If we look back at Blessed Francis Jordan, Today we see a man who lives entirely from God and entirely in God. His written testimonies allow us to discover a man who promised the entire humanity to God and who did not place any other value in life higher than God. Have your spiritual conversations with the Savior. Sit down humbly and tossily at his feet and listen attentively to his words. So we can read in his spiritual diary. Here, we do not find a high striving theology, no pure submission, but the simplicity of an encounter with God, as if from person to person. And further, we can read, always listen to the voice of grace and follow it in spite of difficulties. What we today somewhat unwidely call a pact or a contract was quite simply a loving yes to a God to whom the whole world belongs, who embraces heaven and earth, or simply is all embracing. Quite certainly, this was the reason why John Baptist could not limit the aim of his foundations to only one particular apostolate. Likewise, he could not join the current religious movement of that time because they thought much too small for him. What does this covenant, this laughing yes, mean for us today? As spiritual successors of blessed Francis, 
We, the members of the Salvatorian family, continue to live this covenant as priests, brothers, sisters or lay Salvatorians. With our commitment, our vow, we say yes to cultivate and intensify this intimate lay relationship with God and to follow the Salvatorian way. It is certainly not given to everyone to live such an intimate relationship with God always openly. Also the cultural and temporal circumstances are different today and in some environments it is often not really appropriate to speak of it. Maybe as a priest, brother or sister it could be easier, but as a lay Salvatorian you can quickly find yourself in a terrain where you certainly did not want to go. Here it is necessary to learn to have a good sense of the situation at hand. Some might say to become elastic in the situation. On the one hand, it is not necessary to always jump right in. On the other hand, it is nevertheless necessary to be clear where it is necessary. And in doing so, we may trust in God in the same way as John Baptist did. I deliberately use the first name of the founder here because we should and must come close to him spiritually. He humbly asked to be allowed to be a fit instrument on God's behalf and to reveal God's love to others. Not for nothing did he write in his diary, dive into the ocean of your God's love. For me personally, this pact with God, this yes is a deep connection and mystical experience. Describing it is simple and complicated at the same time. But feeling like you are in a surrounding cloud is probably the best way to describe it. And I think it must have been similar for John Baptist and perhaps for many other Salvatorians who have walked or are walking the same path. But despite all the spiritual affair, let's stay grounded and face reality. Because we don't always succeed and everything turns out well. We are human beings with ups downs and also some dark sides. We try to respond to our daily challenges as best we can and live in a relationship with God, whether we want to or not, whether we are always aware of it or not. We do not know whether God has hands because no one can may even come close to imagining God. But what we can experience again and again is the perceptible nearness as long as we get involved in the thought of His presence. This happens best in prayer, quite simply in conversation with Him. We know from John Baptist that he was constantly in conversation and exchange with God. Witnesses report that he was almost constantly engrossed in prayer. Such closeness and in connection to God must grow and really happens just like that. It requires courage and a certain openness. Experience shows that it is precisely here that we can trust in God's help and support. He opens the doors and windows, prepares the way for us to come to Him. But we have to go through it ourselves and set out on the path. In conclusion, the Poptum of Blessed Francis Jordan remains a timeless guide for Salvatorians worldwide. It's a spiritual classic, offering wisdom and direction for anyone seeking a deeper connection with the Almighty. May the Poptum continue to inspire and guide, fostering a sense of direction.